Let's look at digital and analog pins. If you were to turn a light on and off with a switch, this is similar to a digital signal. There are two states. If we were to use a dimmer dial, it would be similar to an analog signal. We can choose to turn the circuit on or off or any brightness in between. To look at how to send and receive digital and analog signals without having to write any code, we are going to use a photon, a phone, and a multimeter. The pin layout on my phone matches that of the photon. If we tap on any of these pins, we're going to have a few options. All of the pins are able to read and write digital signals, and instead of using an on or an off, a 1 or a 0, we're going to use a high or a low. In our last video, we said that the Arduino only reads and writes in voltages. This means that low means 0 volts and high for the photon is 3.3 volts. We can connect one side of the multimeter to ground and the other to pin D0. If we choose digital write and pick high, you can see that the multimeter gets to about 3.3 volts. And if we switch it to low, it will drop back down to zero volts. And this works for any of the other pins. Let's try this trick with something a little bit more exciting. If we connect a resistor and LED between pin D0 and ground, we can turn it on and off. If we change this pin to analog right, we can alter the brightness of the LED. As we slide the values up and down, the LED needs a certain voltage to turn on, and then it can slowly increase its brightness. If we hook up a multimeter again, we can gradually change the voltage output from this pin. To turn something just on or off, we use digital write. But for a more granular voltage output, we're going to use an analog write. We can also get information from our circuits by using the read option. Using digital read, we can look for 0 or 3.3 volts coming into a pin. Again, this is low or high. Let's hook up a limit switch. On this diagram, you can see there's a common, which is ground. The NC means normally closed. This is the path that electricity normally takes. The NO means normally open. And when we hit this button, the piece of metal inside will be pushed down and the electricity will flow through the bottom half of the switch. We hooked the common up to D5. This will read the voltage values. We hooked the normally closed part of the circuit to D3, and this will provide 3.3 volts to the switch. When it's hooked up and we press refresh on D5, we can see that it reads high because it's getting the 3.3 volts. When we push the button down, we see that D5 goes to low because the electrical path was diverted. Now, if we hook it up to the normally open part of the switch, you can see that it reads low when the button is not pressed, and it reads high when the button is pressed. Using an analog read, we are looking for numbers in a range, so we need something that's going to change its value. We are going to use a photoresistor, also known as an LDR, and it changes its resistance as the brightness in the room is altered. So if we just went from D0, which supplies the 3.3 volts, to the LDR, to the analog input, we would read the max voltage no matter how much or how little light we used. We have to make a voltage divider using a resistor. Now we see as the light intensity goes up, the voltage goes up. And as the light intensity goes down, the voltage reading goes down. In the next episode, we will discuss why the values for analog go from 0 to 255 or 0 to 4095 and not from 0% to 100%. We will also go over pulse width modulation, analog digital converters, pull up resistors, and pull down resistors. If you have any questions or comments, you can talk to us down below or on social media. You can also support us by going to patreon.com slash and as always, keep exploring.